Well, I know the difficulties. I tell myself the only professor of banking systems engineering in engineering on the planet, and there are no such courses. Yeah. So, how can I tell myself that way? What a daring gamble. Anyway. Well, you know, you can do whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. That's basically. So, anyway, thank you for coming. Yeah. And um, so um, Suzanne had mentioned this to me a, a couple of times. So I, I took over as editor of the Parliamentary Review uh, about two and a half years ago from uh, the editor who'd been here for about 30 years. And uh, I was uh, talking to Suzanne. She was a volunteer to, to help us with the publication. She was saying, like, I have a couple of article ideas that I'd like to propose. And, and one of the people who I'd really am interested in, in doing some research about is John Trinnell. And we thought it would be a, a great idea because the, the point of the Parliamentary Review is sort of set up, it's, it's something that um, parliamentarians across the country receive, but also something that political science people use and the clerks at the various uh, uh, assemblies use. Where is it going to be available to them? So it's, it's uh, published online. Okay. We have an online edition. And then we also, every parliamentarian uh, in the country, federal, okay. provincial, territorial, gets a copy to their office, okay. a printed copy. Actually, I should have brought a printed uh, copy with me. I can run and grab one. Um, and then also uh, libraries in uh, uh, parliaments get copies, uh, clerks and, and professional uh, mm -hmm. people within legislatures get copies. So we have a print run of about 2,000 or so French okay. English. Yeah. Do you also give it to uh, uh, university libraries, academic Some of them subscribe, yeah. yeah. There are yeah. some institutional subscribers as well, but it's mostly sort of a, an in-house journal for uh, various legislatures. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the point of the, the journal, it's, it's a quarterly one, is to promote the idea of parliamentary democracy. And so one of the things that we were talking about about this is that you're someone who's very heavily invested in parliamentary democracy for, for running so often. So this is a, an excellent event. And I guess one of the, the big things is like we, we want to sort of have a free-ranging conversation about this, but the, the, I guess, logical place to start is how did you first get involved in deciding to run for, for public office? Well. It started in 1974 when I fluked taking a new course at Carleton University called the Mathematics of Gambling. And that was just when Beat the Dealer came out, the, the blackjack software that taught gamblers how you could beat the casinos. And so I learned how to play and I started going down on junkets and I started making money and I became, you know, Ottawa's blackjack, well, gambling crusader, okay? And uh, that's just up to 97 some press clippings. So that's in the gambling stuff. So I started getting barred in Las Vegas. And, because you're too good. Yeah, and I understand why, because I was taking away their winnings from seven smaller tables, you know? You, you don't have to have me in your place, and they didn't. And so I came back to Canada and said, well, look, if this is now a game of skill like poker, and I can play poker as long as it's fair and everybody gets the same chances, I'm going to run a, you know, you may blank me back blackjack game, and that should be fair and okay. Well, I did, and I got busted, and the judge said, I don't care, you're too good, guilty. Give me a criminal record. So I said, now watch me go. Okay. And so after five or six more raids trying to find a legal way to run gambling and blackjack legally, I ran for parliament in 1979 to legalize gambling. So and that's why you ran. The first time. But you said 74 first. No, that so was the, the gambling was, course. But that was your course. Okay, so then I did five years of gambling so professionally. You, okay, all right. And so in 79 you ran for the federal Pardon. parliament. I got busted in 77 and 78 right. and I got okay. tired of being busted in 79. So you ran in 79 to legalize gambling. Yeah. So you actually had a purpose for running. Yeah. That was your that platform. That goaded me there was being busted. <laughs> being being known as a criminal in my society. Had, had you talked to other people who were already uh, elected or in, in other parties about the, no. what you were facing? No, no. Okay. I just ran as an independent, clueless about how the game was set up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, knocked on doors and all that kind of stuff like any newbie would. And then my 193 votes, I said, well, that ain't going to work. So who voted for you? Probably some of the people I spoke to. I don't know, because uh, by then I was a pretty notorious character in Ottawa for the gambling raids. And I was running underground gambling casinos. And like I said, you know, these were just some of the articles, but I was sticking it in their face. You yeah. know, come and get me. And they did, often enough, until I finally won. But in 79, I ran to legalize gambling. 
And then they asked me about inflation. And I said, how come the chips in my casino never lose their value and the government's chips lose value over time? I, I asked this on Dragon's Den yeah. yes. when I was on Dragon's yes. Den, but they chalked it out. Right. Okay. And uh, I said, well, it's the same hardware. Which led me to conclude that inflation had to be a software problem. Uh -huh. If poker chips don't lose value and government chips do, it has to do with how they go in and out, not how they're used in the casino. So I did an engineering analysis and within 40 days, I remember that, I wrote in the 40th day after that, I wonder what an interest-free world would look like. I mean, run like poker chips. Mm -hmm. You got collateral, the bank, of Canada gives you a credit line for that collateral, you know? No interest, because no middlemen in between. Right. So I said to myself, wow, all we gotta do is run money like poker chips interest free, and you can't have inflation. And there's enough for everybody to have a job. Wow, how come they're doing it wrong? So I didn't know then, I have some information now, but I just said, well, I'm gonna start talking about running, cause running money like a poker game. And I used to, so therefore in my elections, after the big bust, with right. the biggest casino, I had, when I was found not guilty once, I ended up with a 28 table underground game before they busted me and changed the law. But still, that was another story. But still, I was the only candidate who would bring to the election meetings right. a blackjack table to show people how chips could work. You want a house? I'll build you some municipal housing, pay these guys with brand new chips, back it up, uh, chips with the housing, and then people who want some of that housing, take those chips. I'll end the Joe Clark government, Pierre got knocked out. I wrote a letter and offered the Joe Clark government a hundred billion dollars worth of my casino chips on one condition, that they be exchanged directly for work. And in that way, people will retain their confidence in my chips that they now have. So did Joe Clark <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, and of course, standard government answer, which is, we got we've, your letter. we've got your letter, we appreciate what you said, we've handed it over to someone important to keep it in mind. Right. <laughs> right, right, so after a couple of years of writing the government and enough of those answers, I knew how that worked. Okay, so but what, what writing did you run in? Do you remember? Ottawa West, first one. Ottawa if West? you go to Wiki, they got a list of all the 88 oh, yeah, elections. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, Wiki. It's all here. Okay, yeah. so Ottawa West, let's yeah. see. You said how many did you get that now? I think uh, 88 now or 89. 193. 193 votes. That was yeah. a good one. Yeah. So, no, 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 no. Ottawa, 4,500. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. 193 is one of the middle range ones. So when you were going around the first time you were the newbie knocking on doors, yeah. how many doors did you knock on? In, in as many as I could in the month campaign, you know, maybe a thousand. I don't know. Did, was it a, a sole operation or did you have... Yeah, I was all alone. Yeah, it was independent. Running as an independent yeah. too, you know. It was one of the big three parties and me. And uh, so, you know, they didn't cheat me in that election. I wasn't excluded from any debates. Now I'm excluded regularly. And uh, that's why it doesn't feel bad losing when you're being cheated, you yeah. know. So, um, so you, you said, so there were only four candidates at the that time. One. Yes. So you were the independent. Yes. Because these days, of course, you'll get seven and eight because um, you'll get the Freedom Party. Yeah. You'll get people like you. They weren't running. there. No, they weren't there. No. I, in this matter of fact, in the anthology of Great Canadian Can Gambler, I'm mean, sorry, Great Canadian Gambler Anthology, one of the lines the guy liked best was when I said, there are four parties, oh, wait a minute, there are four major forces in Canadian politics present in all elections. Liberals, NDP, and the Conservatives, and John Turmel. <laughs> <laughs> your first campaign and, and I went from abolish you know I was basically my original platform was completely libertarian I want cops out of my life no, you know no gambling hooking prohibition laws you know it's between you and your doctor so that was my platform to do with the gambling in there too what else shouldn't be bothered well ugly people got a right to get laid so get the cops out of their lives and drugs well i mean you got a right to pick your own mode and rate of dying as long as you don't bother me do what you want to do yeah so and that's what was my ethos in running the first time but then i found out about 
interest gumming up the software. Mm -hmm. And so I said, wow, I'm the only computer engineer. Oh, by the way, I got a, you know, an electrical engineering degree. Yeah. Before my last year, I found out about gambling. Yeah. And the prof said, John, you're going to make six bucks an hour working for Brian Mulroney at the Iron Ore Company in Sheffield, Quebec, and you're making 15 an hour playing poker and 40 an hour on junkets in Vegas. Are you crazy? Be the teaching assistant on my gambling course and try and be a professional gambler. And I went, okay. And I became the teaching assistant of the mathematics of gambling course and I started junketing to Vegas for the next five years and did that. That's okay, where so, that disappeared. So but what gets me about this, so you've got that going and you ran in this election and you got your 193 votes, but then you ran again. Okay. Next year. In fact, that was May and then in February you ran again. Which election was that? That was uh, Federal Ottawa Center. And you got well, that was the general yeah. election again. Well, that was the general. Yeah. By now, yes. I knew that, gee, we got to fix the banks. Joe Clark ain't interested in using my bank and my chips. Right. I better go tell people. Mm -hmm. And then I started running in every election I could find because I can set up the software to give you interest-free poker chips, whether it's a national database, provincial database, or municipal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. If I get elected, I install the software, you now got a credit line for poker chips yeah. that you got to back up with working it off. That's the system. So I just started running for everything at that point. So when you were running, like you were mentioning like at first with your first campaign, you were one of four, so there weren't yeah. that many candidates, and you were doing door to door stuff. Yeah. Were you also going to like candidate meetings? Oh yeah, that's 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 what I said. I was invited to those in those days. Yeah. So what was what was the the uh, reaction from the other parties and also from the, the people who were in attendance at these, these meetings? Well, the uh, the other parties. Well, I honestly don't know. I've explained to 35 years, 37 years worth of opponents, all we got to do is run it without interest, like poker chips, and we save all the interest, and we got enough money to give everybody a job, mm. right? What goes on in their brains that they hear me say this meeting after meeting, and it doesn't get through? Mm. So, as for the media and the audiences, will they just consider it a little relief from the gray? Mm. Because honestly, most politicians, the good ones, don't lie to you. Mm -hmm. They say, we need this, we need that, you should have this, you deserve that, I want you to have this. Mm -hmm. Now the fact he has no idea how to give it to you mm -hmm. doesn't detract from him wanting to. Yeah. And promising he'll do his best to look into how to do what he doesn't know how to do. Yeah. But he wants it for you, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. You can't say he lied. And they never actually say, I'll give you this. Mm -hmm. They just say, we need, I want, you should have. Mm -hmm. So, you can't really criticize your opponents who never promised them anything anyway. Mm -hmm. If the people found the fact that it, he felt they should have it and they needed it and they wanted it, meant he was going to get it for them, that's their fault, right? So, and that's why they don't lie. But if you look at every election debate out there, and I tape them all and post them all, yeah. that's what it is. We need this, I have that. I mean, it's a constant liturgy of what we need and what you should have without ever going into how to do it. And you know what's funny is that all of the issues have to do with not enough money to do it right. I mean, if you fix the money system, which is the brain of the economic machine, everything would work right. Mm -hmm. But right now you have shortages in every field of endeavor. Because, and I did this on Dragons, didn't I? Well, mortgage means death gamble in French. Mortgage, of course. Gage. Yes. Now, here's how it works. Ten guys put up their watch as collateral. They all borrow ten chips. They all owe eleven. I'm going to use chips to show you how I can make chips inflate. So you know how I can stop chips from inflating. Mm -hmm. So I just got to charge 10% interest. At the end of the game, nine guys come back with eleven and get their watch back. Nothing left in the pot for the tenth guy to come back, and he gets squeezed out of his mortgage, mm -hmm. just like someone in musical chairs gets squeezed out of their death gamble. Mm -hmm. And then they seize the collateral. Yeah. Now, this is what they cut out on Dragon's Den. I said, 
economics teaches that if you got a hundred chips chasing a hundred potatoes, inflation is an increase in the money chasing the potatoes. Shift A. Mm -hmm. And they went cut. And they cut out, I'm the discoverer of shift B inflation mm -hmm. when they seize some potatoes after foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Now why would economics teach only up over here in front of your face money, but not collateral down behind your back? Mm -hmm. All economics teaches that inflation is more money and do not look at the possibility it could be less collateral. So, so I discovered that. Now, that's important later when yeah. I get into another website. So basically, here I am. How do the other candidates take it? Yes. It goes in one ear and out the other. Jesus said when it comes to money and interest, they will forever be hearing without hearing and seeing without seeing or understanding. Mm -hmm. Because it's been given unto you, my apostles, mm -hmm. to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. When I say the kingdom of heaven is at hand, these suckers think it means soon. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. It means stop charging interest and you're in it. Mm -hmm. It's at hand. Just like when you're in heaven, the kingdom of hell is at hand. Mm -hmm. And his most famous parable, the parable of the talents, is all about interest. And he makes people believe that the master is him and he's okaying the interest, yeah. which is why the story made it through history without being censored. But actually, he starts with the kingdom of heaven is like, and then he describes hell, where the master's a loan shark who makes everybody pay him double in interest. And if he, you don't pay him, he says, hey, in this world, to those who have abundance, where's my graph, please? To those who have abundance will more be given And to those who have no abundance, even what they have will be taken away. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the most cited verse in all of Scripture. Yes. And not one person knows what it means. Yeah. To those who have abundance, more than they need, will more be given. Mm -hmm. And from those who don't, they'll take it away. Well, guess what story is that was used in? The parable of the talents where the master said, You lazy servant, you didn't work with the money. You didn't double it like the other guys. You didn't even put it in the bank where I would at least get my interest. Because yeah. you know in this world, to those who have abundance, they get interest. Mm -hmm. And to those who are short, they take it away. So, Jesus' most often stated words in Scripture are how interest works. Yes. And they asked him, well, why do you speak in parables so they don't understand? He said, I, I speak in parables because in this world they take from the poor to give to the rich. He repeated again. He speaks in parable because of interest, usury. So, so, when, so you were running originally as an independent. Yeah. And you were saying that you know, the other parties were, were not necessarily you know, hearing the, the specifics about the, the policy. Well, the main parties that I found out about social credit. Right. So, so there have been a number of parties that you've aligned with in the yeah. past. So there are, there are other people who are... You know, yes. if not exactly in, in line with this. Ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine percent. Social credit. My granddad, when I went up to see him after my first election, said, Hey, I'm in politics. we got to stop interest. It's the only thing. Mm -hmm. My granddad went, and he went and pulled out his books on social credit. Mm -hmm. He said, Hey, interest is theft. Money has no babies. You can't pay interest. Someone's going to lose their house. My granddad mm -hmm. discovers I'm in favor of interest-free credit, and he belonged to a party called Sociable Credit. Mm -hmm. Well, social. Right. That confused them, but if they'd said sociable, it would have been crystal clear. <laughs> so, is your family from, from the Ottawa area? No, like actually, uh, uh, my family, my French family, were from Rouen Aranda. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my dad was an immigrant from Poland. Yes. And... Uh, and at the age of three months, we moved to Hamilton, where he got a job in the Fasco. Oh, okay. And I was there for the next 12 years. Then they separated, and then I went to Ottawa with Mama, where I spent the next 40 years in the know. hub of politics right. for my career, Fluky. Yeah. Yes. And then I went to Brantford the last 13 years, because it's the biggest poker game in the country. So when, you, when that election came and you get 62 votes, how do you feel? Which one was that? election. Oh, well, I think there were eight or ten candidates. And, well, actually... So do you feel like totally defeated? No. Or what's your expectation? Let's well, put it that way. What, what does that say about the voters? Here I am saying, 
you're struggling in debt, you're in misery, you're in poverty, and I want us all to be able to open Bank of Canada accounts, borrow enough cut checks to pay off all our debts, get one number, and after that all payments go against principal. So, how many people don't want that? Put up your hands. Mm -hmm. Do you think they actually knew what they were not voting for when they voted for their favorite blue, red, or brown color? Mm -hmm. No. I can't blame the bourgeoisie. They're, they're fluoridated, vaccinated, you know, dumbed down with chemicals and, uh, and puked out by politics, which is all, I want you to have this, and they never deliver. And they conclude they're lying when they were really tricked. So, what, so you, you get a, a certain number of voters uh, per election. What about the, do you ever get the sense that there are people who may be receptive to your message, but they simply don't vote? They're saying like, you know what, yeah. I get what you're saying, but you know, the system itself yeah. is the, the, yeah. the problem. Yeah, it's throwing away my vote. You're not, you, you have no chance of winning, so I would be throwing away my vote. It's how they think. Like the people who blame Ralph Nader for Bush getting in. So, you know, so, I mean, anyway. What, what do you say to, to those people? Like, obviously, you're, you're in running in the system, you, there, there's, I guess, some value that you're finding to, to these campaigns. Yeah. What, what do you tell the people who are saying, well, you know, I agree with what you're saying, but, um, you know, you're, you're a, a third party or fourth party candidate. Um, it's not like you're going to win. Why, why should I, as a, a voter, bother? And I would say, Many people think that, you know, they have no power, and why try? Mm -hmm. And I agree with people like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for people like that. I'm not looking for people like you, sir, who don't think anything can be done. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for people like me who think something can be done. So, bye. Yeah. I mean, I, the fact that you don't understand and you don't want to fight for your own interest-free your kids will suffer. You'll yeah. get what you deserve, but uh, I don't deserve it. So when you're when you're running, like, and especially if you run in the same area like Ottawa, where you're looking for a place. For a lot, yeah. Did you did you establish a, a certain number of people who were, you know, if they were in your riding, people who were kind of like, yeah, you know what? I would think. People. I would think that when I ran in different Ottawa ridings, I got smaller numbers because there's more teamwork. Mm -hmm. You know, the blues and the browns, and they get talked about, and everything else gets ignored. In a municipal election, they don't have the overt teams, though they're under teams. Mm -hmm. And so I got 4,500 votes, over 4,000 twice running for mayor of Ottawa. But that includes all the ridings, yeah. get it? Yeah. So I would think that the voters from all those other smaller federal and provincial elections and by-elections, 100, 200, 300, 400, were just the same guys I would expect who caught on the first time that even if, even if it's throwing away your vote, well, you still may as well ask for what's going to solve your problems, mm -hmm. in case. No, it's interesting that you ran for mayor because your, your, um, your issue is not a, a local issue. It's no, it really is. A federal no, issue. no, 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 it's not. I can run a let's... Now, by the way, in 1984, I financed the world's first time bank software. Mm -hmm. Every time you hear about a crash now, uh, Greece, Plan B, where is that? I thought I had it here and brought it. Greece is Plan B, do I have it? Do you know what that was? That was in case they shut us off from trade with, with, with our current money system, yes. we're going to set up an online backup poker chip system for our citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, every time there's been a crash, you can go find stories about Let's, which is my software. I financed this LET software back in 1984 yes. and it is spread around the world now so much so that I got invited to the United Nations in 2000 yes. to go to the Millennium Forum yes. and do the speech on banking wow. and they packed, imagine me walking around the UN with the white hood hat on and they passed the resolution yes. C6 to governments to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. Wow. Now they cut out Unilets, the name of the software, mm -hmm. and United Nations attached. They asked me, what are we going to call it? I said, it's a LUT system. But what are we going to call it for the world? I went, United States, United Nations International and Local Employment Trading Software. Right. Unilets. 
Okay, so that's so they cut out the unilet. Now, if they left that in the Millennium Declaration, every politician from Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, France, Germany would have recognized, oh, restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative let's. Because they had let's in all their countries. Yes. They knew about them by then. That's why in 2000, they had to cut the word let's out of the Millennium Declaration and interest-free, its greatest feature. But they left in time-based currency, which has to be interest-free. Mm -hmm. A one-hour bill, a child hour, okay? A child hour will always be worth an, an hour of unskilled labor. Mm -hmm. Now, the doctor may command 10 hours per hour in his surgery. But when he's out there cleaning the park with his grandson, he's getting the same one hour per hour as his grandson is. Mm -hmm. That's how time banking would work. It's capitalistic, but the base is a kid hour, okay? Mm -hmm. And so anyway, why did I go there? That's not it. Oh, the United Nations. So, how I got there, I don't know. But anyway, it's a funny story. This is... This is the United Nations Millennium Assembly with the world's all the world's greatest leaders, you yes. know, all the nations' leaders. So you in there. And uh, here's uh, there's Clinton, and there's Ehud and Arafat, and the Chinese guy, and Blair, and Castro, and John Turmel was there too. No. Okay. Cool. John Turmel, and that newspaper at the in every New York hotel on the morning when they were all there. Plus, I was at the religious summit. Plus, I was at the forum, and then I went to the student summit in December. So all four UN summits, I got my let's message out, including at the student one. One kid got up and said, John Turmel raised the let's system in the forum, and they cut out the other ones, but we students want it too. Mm -hmm. And I got it on video, and now it's gone. But anyway, the point is, he did it. Yeah. So anyway, the point was that Weird things have happened yeah. in my career to tell me that good things are happening. For instance, a couple of years ago, China had 800 million Facebook users. And they started with something called QQ coins. Mm -hmm. So they could trade amongst each other in games and stuff like that. And people started using their QQ coins to buy and pay things. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the banks realized, hey, we're not getting any interest mm -hmm. from 800 million people be using our chips. Mm -hmm. We don't want them using QQ coin chips interest free. Mm -hmm. We want them borrowing them from us. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they pushed the government. I don't know if they closed it down yet, but still that really did a whack into the, and I saw, wow, 800 million connected people with an interest free bank account with an only 5 billion more to go. Mm -hmm. So, plus every time there's a crash, Argentina, twice they crashed, twice they built massive interest-free provincial bond systems. I talk about provincial bonds in my elections because the example used elsewhere were done by provinces in Argentina. Mm -hmm. They were broke. They couldn't pay. Mm -hmm. And the union said, well, we're not going to take no layoffs here. We want you, instead of bringing your million-dollar bond to New York to try and get bills to pay us with, mm -hmm. we want you to print up one-dollar bonds and pay a peso bonds and pay us directly with the bonds as long as we can use them for hydro medical licenses and taxes. So, so they did. And guess what? No layoffs. Gee, with the bonds we can hire more people. Mm -hmm. And in five years, national debt paid off to the outside world. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make the news. So, provinces who use their own bonds mm -hmm. in small denominations to pay people is exactly the same thing as provinces borrowing from a bank, paying people, and not taking out interest too. So to pick up on that that point, because you run for municipal, provincial, and, and federal, and same said, software right, everywhere. Same software everywhere. What about the 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 systems to run? Do you find that when you're running a municipal campaign or a provincial campaign or a federal campaign that there's um, any kind of difficulty that you face as a, a candidate registering, especially if you're coming from uh, either as an independent or from a smaller party? Well, no. Right now, right now, the major um, interference with democracy mm -hmm. is the major media, who in the Vesna case were given the right to exclude any candidates they want from debates. Mm -hmm. I took it to the Supreme Court of Canada mm -hmm. about four years ago. A Rogers guy 
moderator decides he doesn't want anybody wearing any buttons or any hats or any paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, what right do you have to tell me about my appearance mm -hmm. at a debate? Mm -hmm. So I put on my button and he had me arrested and taken out. Mm -hmm. And I complained to the uh, Canada, I didn't get my fair share of time. Because mm -hmm. that's not a good reason to deny me my equal time. I had a let's button on. Yeah. And so, um, the, first, the CRTC said, sorry, no, due to the Vesna decision, they don't even have to let you on, let alone have a reason. And I appealed that to the CRTC, and they said, they don't have to have a reason, they can bar anybody they want, and I took it to the Supreme Court of Canada, and they agreed. Media can bar anybody they want, and now they do it. So, is... Were there any organizations or other people who were supportive of your, your campaign saying, you know, wait a second, th this this ruling isn't fair to people who are no are owed a, no. So were you sort of self financing? Yeah, your, I didn't. I, I mean, I didn't have to use lawyers. I do this. I mean, after being busted so many times in my youth, yeah. I learned to defend myself. I learned how to use the courts. Then I started helping poor people fight their foreclosures. Okay, and I came up with kids. See, Bank of Canada, Gaiman House, that's a different kit. But I mean, uh, there was a lady in Smith's Falls, Mrs. Metcalf. Um, where's that one? And, you know, I basically had a kit to help people stall their foreclosures. Mm. Every document you would need to argue that the Bible says um, it's, you can't take interest and the criminal code says that you can't charge a fee for the privilege of participating in a gamble. That makes you a gaming house. And interest is a fee for the privilege of participating in the death gamble. Mm -hmm. So I use criminal code arguments, and just like the slothful servant story in the Bible, where he returned the principal and stiffed the master for the interest, my kids accepted responsibility for the principal created, and only repudiated the interest that was never created. So you have run in 89 elections. Something like that, yeah. And so you're. 88, according to this, yeah. was with the Oshawa, that was the last one. Yeah. So are you going to run now in Scarborough Rouge River? Yeah. Of course. Well, the point is, I, I just walk up and I say, I have this software mm -hmm. which can give... Here, how do I get 100 signatures off the streets yes. in five hours? Yes. Who, who can do that? I walk up and I say, hi there, I'm John Turmel, yeah. and I want to be a candidate in a by-election. Mm -hmm. For the right to speak, I need my signatures, and I want to talk about the LET software that allows single and poor parents... Do so you tell them this? Yeah. You walk into the... This is my pitch, I meet you on the street. Yeah, okay. I meet so you on the I'm street, and, yeah. I say, hi, I'm John, the engineer right. Turmel, I want to be a candidate in a by-election, can you vote here? Yes. So you need to have 100 signatures? Oh, 20, 25 provincially, 100 federally. Okay. okay. Okay, so whatever it is, I say, and I want to talk about the LED software. You ever heard of that? No. Well, basically, it allows single parents to log on what nights they can double duty babysit each other's kids right. and then pay each other with one hour bills even when they're broke. Mm -hmm. Time banking. Understand? Yeah. I say, that's why I just want to talk about it. Would you give me the right to run and talk about time banking? Sure. Where do I sign? Mm -hmm. So, do you do that like uh, every election? Uh, the uh, nominations close at two o'clock. Yeah. So, are you start at nine o'clock in the morning doing the that? last day? Because I have seen that I'm waiting for you to register. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> and I come in the last very, day. I know. Yeah, you do. So, is that what you do just that morning? No, no, no. I try and do it a day advance. Okay. But usually, because I can, because I can get my signatures in an hour, yeah. do I really need to rush? And if I go on the last day, it's a bit of a eclat. You know, until then it's boring, 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 and all of a sudden, ah, Guinness record guy showed up. So anyway, but that's the only press I'll get. Yeah. They won't talk about the lets. Or if they do, they'll just say he's in favor of a barter system. Well, I was looking at, expand. I searched your name in the, da in the news database lately, and most of the articles lately are, all they do is they give uh, the results of the election. Yeah. They're not really writing about you very much. They never they do. They did earlier. I, no, they never there did. Were a few. There were a few. Uh, oh, well, you're talking like 30 years ago. Yeah, maybe. Before I got stale. <laughs> um, 
to some people. So how much does it cost you to run? Well, first of all, oh. I want to know about the party, okay. the proper party. Yeah. And then I want to know uh, how much it costs for you to get a party and what you have to do to keep all that right. party going all rather right. than it being drunk. Well, federally, federally, it's a thousand bucks. you got to file. You get it back when you file your return. And I'm now suing the chief election officer right now in the Federal Court of Appeal saying, hey, the cap of $250 on auditor's fees is an impediment to a pauper running when my auditor charges me 700 bucks. Right. Mm. 45 years ago, 40 years ago, okay, 250 was enough for an auditor to do a null return. Yes. But now, 250 ain't enough. It ain't even enough to open the file. Yes. The last guys charged me 700. I say, you guys should be picking this up since I got a null return. Why do you even need an auditor with a null return? Ontario didn't have auditors needed for null returns until just recently. So now but they pay for it all. Okay. So they waste 800 bucks now to process my null return when before they had a certificate saying I got a null return. Yeah. Just to standardize it, they're blowing 800, a, 7, 800 a shot so that I have to get an accountant to verify my zeros. Okay. But the, fed, the feds, well anyway, they won't pick up the tab. They got a 250 cap. Yeah. So I made a motion to the court. I say, I want you to strike that cap. It's too low, okay? It's unreasonable after 35, 40 years that the same cap be there and it's think it doesn't interfere with my elections. And the judge said, well, you can save 10 bucks a week until you can pay it off on your own. And I'm appealing, okay? Good I appeal them all. Well, I know, it's a good fight. Don't you? It doesn't matter what the judges say. Yeah. Posterity is going to look at it. Look at, I got, right now, I've got 350 patients, marijuana users, in the federal court. Yes. Not making the news. And one of them's already died while the judge stayed. Wouldn't give him a shot at his interim medicine. Right. Wouldn't give him his medicine while we waited and the guy died now. Right. Now, what are you going to say to people like that? I mean, these people with the power all along, they got the power of life and death, and they're killing people. Did you know that the, it didn't make the news? The federal court, that big famous Allard case out west where they extended everybody's grow permits? All those people who had grow permits, their grow permits are extended. 40,000 permits extended. Guess what? As for the possess permits, to possess what everybody can grow, I'm only going to extend the guys who are alive as of today and the first half of the guys I'm cutting off. So 18,000 people lost their grows, their cheap meds, and were forced to go onto the government thing or be busted by one judge. And the media reported it like he extended everybody's grow permits by not telling them he didn't extend everybody's pearl possess permits to possess what you can grow. 18,000 people get cut off, and one of my 300 is dead, mm -hmm. expecting 60 out of the 18,000 to be dead mm -hmm. due to these judges. So Judge Manson, Judge Phelan, blood on their hands mm -hmm. in the federal courts, but if the media don't report, the bourgeoisie don't find out. So in, in you're saying like for prosperity that, that in fighting these cases, even if you're not necessarily successful in court, that... People I was back. right. Yeah, I was right. But I mean, it's interesting. Like Susanna's mentioned, I'm, I'm doing a history degree, so I'm a historian looking back at this. Okay. Practice. So is that ultimately, if if change can't be affected while you're running right now, yeah. is it a case of basically putting on record as many times as possible that this is possible? More than that, offering people. Look at when I ran in 1996 against Sheila Cops, and of course I'm talking about the Let's. And I said, I don't need to get elected. I just need one person with a brain to go pick up the software and start it yourselves. Well, the headline of that election was Super Loser Fails Again because I've just gotten into the Guinness Book of Records. Super Loser! But exactly one month later, creating work by working together, the Hamilton Self Help Group starts up Hamilton Let's. Wow. Okay. Mission accomplished. Yes. I didn't need to get elected. So uh, let, let me ask you something. So when when you're running in all these elections, when there's not an election on, what 
alternatives do you use to try and get this message out? Well, I promote let's. I say, I have, for instance, you know... Well, uh, how do you do it? Well, I say, you can go to my site and t type out the Unilets page, and there you will have some IOUs that you can sign based on your okay, online account at yeah. Facebook. I owe you an hour. So, I want you to go print up your own 500 bucks in time dollar money. So, are you talking about your, your Facebook page now? Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, well, okay. Is that how you Last it? year? Because I, like, I looked at your Facebook. Okay. I looked at your actual website, which you don't update. Well, I know, because I've switched over to a new one called smartestmanonearth.ca. Oh, Who see. would dare? Who would dare put that up? No one in eight, in the whole history of the internet put that page up before me. <laughs> so you got that domain? So and worldsmartestman.ca. And worldsmartestman.ca. No one, no one dared put it up before me. And guess what? In a year, no one has dared laugh. You know what my husband did? He's got one that says Heinz Legal. He's a lawyer. Okay. So it, does, it just doesn't, it just doesn't sound the same, does it? Heinz Legal. Heinz Legal. Yeah, it just doesn't compare it doesn't quite, doesn't quite have to the smartest man on earth. Well, it's different. It just doesn't different. come so, in there. Do you, do you, in order to, to get this message out, is it mostly now like an online campaign where you're reaching out to people? Or do you, aside well, from like door to door? Here's, or here's the point. Testing? The movement for interest-free current, every time there's a crash, mm -hmm. people start setting up online computer barter systems because they got computers now. Yeah. hundred years ago when there was a crash, they just sat there unemployed, no cash, and died. Mm -hmm. Now there's a crash, no cash, oh, let's do some computer barter. Anybody got a computer? Everybody's got one. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now, I'm showing people how to use their online ID to validate their own paper IOUs mm -hmm. so you can start your own small barter network amongst you and your own friends taking each other's own IOUs mm -hmm. for hours of time. Basic kid, okay? So when you sign an hour and you pay somebody something, that's a one hour bill, but when you earn it back in your surgery, you could be earning back 10 or six in a dentist or three in a mechanic shop. So, but you're signing them out as one. But now, John, you've got all these things that you can do to re get your message out. Why bother running elections? It's free publicity. And it gives people the chance at getting... Look, the only angles of success are politically getting the power to order the Bank of Canada reprogrammed, getting a judge, which I've asked many judges, to order the Bank of Canada reprogrammed, and running our own barter system with the good software at the bottom up. So there are two top-down tactics. One bottom-up tactic I pursue, and I'm doing all three. I haven't done much court bank stuff in yeah. 30 years, just political bank stuff and barter bank stuff. And So uh, the reason you're running your own these elections is because of your issue. To spread the word about less. That's why you're doing it. Yeah, so, so you continue doing it over and over again. Yeah, it's free publicity. Well, and it, but the point is, the joke is on the bourgeoisie. I can sit back and say nobody has turned down interest-free loans more often than the people of Canada, the people of Ottawa. Oh, the people of Toronto, Spadina turned down interest-free loans in '81. The people of these, they turned down interest-free loans. We want to pay our bankers in 1984. These people turned down interest-free loans in 2016. Coming up in Scarborough. What do I care? The joke is on them, not on me. You understand? What I'm pushing is what Jesus, this is a Jesus commune. Mm -hmm. Jesus, why they attacked and hated the Christians was that Jesus had come up with a way of getting slaves out of debt. He said, give your money to the poor and follow me. And rich guys just couldn't do that. And you think, I'm not going to give my money to the druggies and the drunks in the streets. That's not what he meant. Mm -hmm. His Commune. His commune was called the poor. And he meant, give your money to our treasurer and come live with us. Our treasurer is going to buy some guy out of slavery and say, come live with us. And now all your winnings strengthen the commune. And like Paul said, 814 Corinthians 2, the greatest definition of let's there is. And note the difference with the abundance before. Bef usury to those who have abundance get more. Those who are short, they take it away. Paul said, your abundance, your spare seeds, shall at the present time be a supply for his want. Mm -hmm. 
so that his abundance later may be a supply for your want. And in that way, he who gathers much doesn't get more, he doesn't even have too much. Mm -hmm. And he who gathers little doesn't have too little. Okay. That there be equality. So the, there's the, the balance. So the let system is the anti-poverty, anti-slavery system designed by Jesus, explained in Paul Corinthians 2, 8, 14. So in, so this is one way of getting the message out. The other way is through your, your online presence. What about other things? One of the things that we looked at um, in our uh, publication are some of the things like e-petitions that you... you I see. know, I thought of that, but I, I just... Yes, it would be a great idea. You know, there's so many, you know, how do you start? You know, I mean, there's so many things I could do. You know, well, right now, getting rich may be the only thing I'm good. Only now, don't think I haven't got a way of doing that too. Let me show you. You know, John, the smartest man on earth, get rich system. So, um, a question for you that's sort of building on that too. So you you've done this for I guess now 35 years. 37. Yeah. 37 years. You, you mentioned early on that your family was involved in social credit yeah. uh, initially. Are there people who, having heard your message, are saying, like, not only do I support you, but I, I want to spread that message? And do you see that there would be someone, you know, no. coming in the wings to almost stop, take the, the proper party, for example? No, almost none. What it, your almost family? none because it, 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 incurs, it incurs the wrath of the rich. To be talking about no interest, you know that offends them. Incurs the wrath of the rich. Um, it goes up against the cognitive dissonance that's been installed. I mean, you got to pay interest. Come on, nobody's going to lend you money with no interest. Mm -hmm. How about the guy who prints the stuff? Mm -hmm. Duh! Never I thought of that. Sure, the guy who worked for it deserves interest. What about the guy who just printed the chips? Does she get interest? Duh! So there's just, you can't blame the bourgeoisie mm -hmm. who've been kept uninformed as well as deluded and probably subliminally hypnotized by their boob tubes. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to the abolitionist party, which you started up. You tried to start an Ontario social credit, right? Yeah. At some point. Yeah. In 1981, actually, we yeah. were called social credit. And Ontario. then you and then you start an abolitionist party. What what yeah. does that mean? Abolition? Well, the abolitionist movement was the anti-slavery movement okay. of the past. Okay, so I refer to that. To slavery, but okay. debt slavery. Okay. The point is, that those abolitionists got rid of the metal chains. I'm here to get rid of the invisible debt chains. Okay. Finish the job. So, how many members did you get in that party? Oh. A couple of hundred, maybe. Or, but I, I'm just saying that they were mainly friends who were connected with me when we were trying to spread the barter message. So did you try to do this like a, a regular party and that you got card-carrying members? In 1993, things? after I had run the big million-dollar casino and made the million bucks, yes. I had to spend it before they took it away yes. under the proceeds of crime. Right. So I blew it running for prime minister with 80 candidates, more than the Greens. That's where all the money went. That's where all the supporters came in when I could organize to finance 80 guys yeah. for the party. And we had a good time. But I had to spend the money before they took it away. Yeah. So this is on the abolitionist party. Yes. So that's what you did. That's right. That's how, I, that's how the abolitionist party came into existence. Me having to spend a million bucks. Okay. All right. So now what about the proper party? When did you start that? Well, that was later on. I mean, a couple of years later, I said... Because look, this is all independent, independent. Yeah, yeah. Party, I think, I was, because I was reading the, the yeah. Two general was, elections ago, I think. Yeah, it was fairly yeah. recent. Here yeah. it is. Yeah. Now, here's the point. Um, when you, when you, now I'm going to explain how tax credit works. I hope I can blow your mind. Go for my camera, too. Um, federally, if you give 1150 bucks to a party, mm -hmm. you get a tax credit, and the government will give you back 500 for supporting politics. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. In Ontario, now, if you give three G's, you get back one. Now, if you give 400, you'll get back 300, 75%. But if you give the max, you only get back a third. Right. Same with the feds. Now, during the, proper, during the abolitionist party, I gave everybody some abolitionist party currency. Yes. I printed up some good stuff, and I gave everybody 500 to start. And I said, okay, now we've got a list. We're going to go out there. We're going to invite... Now, why wouldn't a guy who owns a movie theater want to give... 3,000 bucks worth of tickets to the liberals. 
and get a thousand bucks in credit. He's going to lose those tickets anyway. He could say only on Mondays when I'm empty. Right. Liberals can come in and watch my movies. And I get a thousand, 33 cents on the dollar. Why wouldn't he do that? Yeah. Why wouldn't the guy have a driving range, give the liberals and the Tories 3,000 in golf buckets? Why can't they do that? Yeah. It's too hard to distribute yes. to their members. Yeah. But my members had our own currency. Mm -hmm. So, I only had to announce that this movie theater is now accepting our currency up to 3,000 bucks. So he comes in, gives me a gift certificate for three G's that he owes us, and then we start bringing in our chips, our party chips, until he's got his three G's, and then he paid for his tax credit. Now, when you have a party currency, you can now invite people who normally cannot contribute to political parties to give you stuff mm -hmm. to give to your people. Mm -hmm. That's why I joined the provincial and set it up provincially because federally, let's say we go to a restaurant. I say, look, we want to have a banquet, 20 people. You know, you can charge 1150 and you'll end up with 500 bucks. You want it? Feed 20 people. All right, okay. So, we show up at the banquet. He cuts our party a contribution, 1150 mm -hmm. We cut him a check to pay for the banquet, and we have the banquet. Mm -hmm. That's legal. No one else ever does that. Maybe they do, but print jobs and cars, other parties will do, tax credits, but oh, nothing else. Yeah. But when you have your own currency, you can now accept anything else. Just say you're accepting our currency, party currency in your store till you got your gift certificate, and you've now done it, complied with the government's requirements, and I get a whole bunch of goodies I can give the poor people. I can go up to a restaurant and say, I want you to send 400 bucks worth of pizza down to the soup kitchen, mm -hmm. and here's 300 buck tax credit from the Ontario government, mm -hmm. okay? So, that is the power of having tax credits if you are a populist rather than an elitist. Mm -hmm. Because an elitist party are looking for cars and print jobs and advertising and stuff they can use like that for tax credits. But they ain't looking for food and, and shoes and old this that they can give their members. Mm -hmm. I am. Barter is the name of my game. Mm -hmm. And if I can get the government to provide a whole warehouse full of stuff from guys who want to get rid of it, hey, 80% sale. Take 33% and give it to my party. Three G's worth. Bam! So do you... Need a... Do you, you're, you're running municipally, provincially, federally. There, with the, the LED system and with other systems like it, there, with social credit, it was part of a, a Canadian party, but it was part of a, a worldwide yeah. thing. Do you have connections to other people around the world who are proposing similar types of, of systems? Well, yes, systems? There, are, there are a few other advocates out there, but... None of them can take on establishment um, opponents in debate because all they have to do is say, print money, that'll cause inflation. Mm -hmm. And because they don't know about shift A inflation, shift B, because they think inflation is more money and if they print more money for paychecks, that's gonna cause worse inflation, so you can't print more money for paychecks. But if you know that Argentina printed more money for paychecks and inflation went down because there was less foreclosure. Mm -hmm. What? When Argentina first used bonds, inflation was at a thousand percent. I got the article. And it went down to 30%, mm -hmm. 36. So by pumping money into circulation, you reduce failure and you reduce foreclosure and you reduce shift B inflation. Mm -hmm. But they don't even know about it shift be inflation. So I'm the only, that is why smartest man on earth claim to fame. I'm the only professor of economics or banking systems engineering, I prefer engineering, to teach that it could be up over here, but it could also be down over there. Mm -hmm. They won't teach you down over there. I teach you down okay. over there okay. with examples. So if you're going to run now in Scarborough Rouge River, yeah. 
Are you going to do a campaign at all? Well, I always do. I go to all the meetings I'm invited you to. You do go out? Oh, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, if they have a meeting and I'm not invited to, I'll go bust it up you and make them bring anyway. the cops. Okay, so you can... No, 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 no. You can look yeah. through the last five years. Every election in Ontario has entailed, re almost in the yeah. last five years, I've had to be arrested. Every single one. Mm -hmm. One, I, I drove three hours to get to Barrie at the last election. Yeah. And I show up there with one minute before the debate starts. I take my seat. Everybody else gives their speech and he goes on to questions. He said, you should have reported to me before hey, well, you don't get to participate. The paper. Did it? I read about that. The guy who cut me off because I didn't tell him I was there. I read about that somewhere. Yeah. So, okay, so okay. you actually do go to all the parties? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and do you bother knocking on doors anymore? No, 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 no. 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 That, it, why should they be allowed to go into your home on the tube and you expect me to knock on doors? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They well, get 10,000, 20,000 a crack, and I'm supposed to do them one at a time? Uh -uh. So now you're living in Brantford and you're going to be running in, uh, in the northeast corner of yeah. Toronto. Yeah. So you have no connection with there at all. No, just Obviously. like just like Whitby, just like Barry, yeah. I got nothing but my software that's going to give you an interest-free loan out of your debts. Okay. Now vote against it, so I can laugh at you for the rest of your lives. <laughs> Sad, you know. But if I was a fool, then it would be a different story. They could have just said another one of the fools. Why check into it? But they didn't check into it, and if they checked into me, they would have found out about the interest-free loans, and therefore it's their fault, not my fault. I gave them the chance to find me. Now, how did you get into the Guinness Book of Records? Uh, in 97, some reporter called up and said, who's the guy in there now? Lord Such, 39? Oh, we yeah. got a guy in Ontario, 41. Okay, so a reporter uh, did it yeah. for you. I think it was a reporter for the Ottawa Sun who did it, yeah. So how did how did you feel when you found that record? Did you know that this was a possibility after? Well, that? I, I didn't even know anybody else would have been up around thirty nine. I mean, what kind of moron would run in thirty nine elections unless he had some incredibly gifted software that can blow people away even at this stage? Interest free loan software. You don't want it. So how what could he? He was running as a jokester. Yeah. He was with the raving monster loony party, right. like our rhinos. But right. hey, don't laugh. In the last two, in the last federal election, I got the rhino party to endorse Let's. Okay, I got eleven other minor parties in Canada candidates to say, yeah, okay, tell them if they vote for me, I'll support your Let's. And I came up with an alternate slate of candidates across the country you could vote for. Whom would be most likely persuaded to vote for a let's if we get in? So, what else can I do? How did how did you reach out to these these parties? Was this just sort of No, I actually phoned their leaders and contacted some of their candidates and said, look, if there's a software out there that allows poor people to pay with one hour bills. Mm -hmm. And we want to do a setup at the Bank of Canada so that now you can log on and instead of using a visa to buy in, you can give them a thousand hours of labor, promise. Yeah. And now you cut checks to settle all your debts below, and after that, all payments gains principal. And 11 parties, I think, out of 12 leaders went, yeah, okay, let's go. And they joined the coalition. You can see it at my smartestmanonearth.ca site. They got a whole so bunch of visits upset. there. I didn't they, find that. Didn't. I've never found that. No, I searched John Termal on Google. But Suzanne, that doesn't no come smartest up. world online. Oh, I didn't see it. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> failure. But maybe you need to put in some metadata. Or maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put my name in it, maybe. Yes. I, maybe I didn't even put Termal at the top maybe somewhere. Maybe you didn't. So I didn't, I mean, I know you're the smartest man I've ever <laughs> Well, the, no one's laughing. Whoa, 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 I whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I, okay. Look at one of my greatest productions politically was the last general election, the student vote videos. Yes. Okay, there were like yes. five questions by the students. Well, I answered them and, you know, hi kids! It was the start of my thing. I'm talking to grade fours. Okay. And I said, all right now, I got a grade 17 in science. A grade 17 in science? A lot more impressive than a bachelor, isn't it? Don't you think? You know, and they figure, well, where's your bachelorette? You see, so grade 17 in science, and they go, whoa, right? I want to shake them up, you know, and other stuff. But I mean, stuff so that even kids can understand this stuff. Yes. Then I said, now go explain it to your parents. Yeah, we're going to live with that. <laughs> it's sad. Well, their parents, well, they've got their minds made up. They have their... 
friendlies they've always voted for. It's a team-like atmosphere. Uh, ideas have never interrupted politics in their family. It's always been red. They've always gone to the parties. They've always been nice to us. He's there to help us if we need him. What have ideas got to do with politics? Okay, but well, i got to go back to you registering now. So you, okay. get, you, you get your 25 or your 100 uh, people Signatures, yeah. Up. So what else do you need? That's it. You just walk you in. in. And you need your like your driver's license? or. Well, I guess you could, they could ask for ID, but they know me. So, so. so do you always, like, if there's a particular office you go to? Yeah, there's a returning officer. Of no, no, they all have a returning they officer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's where you have to so go. So I'll go to the Scarborough and Rose returning officer. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're waiting for you. I know. I mean, I know from the other. Okay. I know from other uh, other people who've said, uh, you know, when I was taking my course on being a returning officer, they talked about expecting you to show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I know those funny stories too. That's great. Yeah. I like that. Oh, one great one, Leslie. That was federal though. Yes. In in a by election in downtown Toronto, I I almost missed it. I was doing my signatures at the last day, and I went down the wrong road. Yes. And then when I realize it's like six minutes to and I'm on the yeah. wrong road yeah. and I gotta get all the way back and all the way or I start running and I, what can I do? I try, will you give me a ride? First guy locks his windows, second guy, Chinese guy says, I gotta get down there in two, f I was in the wrong place, it's an election, can you help me? He went, sure, hop in. I raced in and I jumped on the, on the camera and went, I made it! And the whole place erupted and Leslie Singer came out and said, oh, John, you still had four minutes. <laughs> With four minutes. I know. Okay, that's terrific. Now, don't you have to pay for that too? Do you have to Federal, you have to put a thousand down. But, but you get provincial? It back. Provincial's free. It's free. Yeah, it used to be two hundred. Okay, so now it's free. So yeah, and then, but but guess what? In the old, after it was determined we shouldn't have to pay, they reimbursed all the people who'd ever paid two hundred, and I got fourteen hundred bucks bucks back in one shot How once. So it's free for Ontario. Okay. Everything is done free for Ontario, and so there's no complaints with the process there, except that the media have free hand to fix the elections by not letting you on. So how do you know that there's an election coming up? How do you find out? Well, friends will usually, a friend just told me this morning about the Scarborough election being called today for the first. Okay, so you don't, like, you're not monitoring particular sites? No, I'll hear about it. I've missed a few in my career. <laughs> I missed a few. Do you ever do you ever consider running outside of? I know that once you ran in Quebec, and I think you said. Oh yeah, I've run in Nova Scotia before. Yeah. Uh, not New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Quebec, anywhere. If yeah. there's a by-election, I'll go, but I'll go to the closest one. Mm. I'm not going to go to Alberta if there's one in Ontario, Quebec. Yeah. So. Um. So we've got probably a little bit of time before lunch just because there's a long line to the okay. buffet. So. Oh, is there? Yeah. Okay, so we should... Wait, no, I had a couple of... Th oh, sorry, I'm sorry. what I was going to ask you. What about your Wikipedia page? I mean, this is quite a Wikipedia article you've got here. I didn't write it, you, you know, and, and they won't let me correct it. They won't let you correct it? I've tried to correct certain things, so, and they just put it back to the way it used to be. But you have to be registered or something, no. don't you? No, 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 no. Any, anybody can go change something. Yeah, okay. No, so but even without signing up, anybody who leaves yeah. their ID there, like me, yeah. John Termel, I changed this thing to say that that happened, and it's not ambiguous. Mm -hmm. And then someone will erase it and put it back so the ambiguity remains. Mm -hmm. Like there was one time when in the 19th provincial 81 election, they said John Termel went and took over the Social Credit Party of Ontario. I don't even know if it was registered at the time, but there was still an existing small group. Well, yeah. what happened, the truth was that all the candidates who were going to run for the Social Credit Party of Ontario showed up at a meeting with the leader, and he wasn't even going to run, mm -hmm. and then he says, I'm going to resign, so that you guys pick an interim leader. So, Reservé resigned, and then, out of the candidates, I became the interim leader for that election. Mm -hmm. So, and they changed that to another story, like I did something unethical. Yeah. Okay, so now when... when and I tried to correct it, and they didn't. When does this go up? Like, if you're running in... Oh, I don't know when they do it and who so does it. So you're not putting that in? No, I don't do that. Do you check often? No. To see what, what's written? No. Even Nothing, I've noticed any changes, but I well, don't see, check. I don't, you know, I've looked at it a few times, but it seems to me your article is very long now. Like, there's a lot in here. It's, no. it's pretty good. I mean, there's a lot. And it's, it seems quite balanced. 
So you don't know who's writing it. No, but, but there's some... But some, anybody can be. But there are like yes. mistakes that you said that are... Yeah, right. some that you know they won't any correct, like that one there, where I, I tried to explain, hey, the leader resigned, yeah. and out of the candidates who were running, I was the leader, and I became interim. Yeah. Nothing else was claimed, and for me to be smeared as, anyway, as a crook uh, offended me. Mm -hmm. And I changed it, put the truth, and then someone changed it back. You've got to put something else in there. Look, other names? Yeah. You've got to put Smartest Man on Earth? Oh, yes, I forgot about that. You did. So what's Taj Professor? You ever seen the movie uh, Rounders with Matt Damon about a young yeah, poker player yeah. during a poker rage of 10 years ago yes. when the hockey went off? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. During the movie, Matt Damon goes to the highest class casino in the country, Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. And there's a scene in there under the chandeliers with the beautiful tables and the cute little dealer and all his friendly tough players and some tuna explaining how it works. Famous line, we don't play together, but when was the last time one piranha ate another piranha? Mm. Okay, and I have a great story to explain how that happens, but I can't go there now. But still, the point was that every card game in every town has its guy they call the professor. Okay. When they're going to ask, okay, what are the odds of drawing to a street? All right, okay. four to one. Drawing to a street. See, right. we're not in Five the world. We don't know that. I know. But, but you can imagine that every game has got its guy they call the professor. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, it just so happened that I used to be called the professor at the Taj Mahal of movie fame. Okay. So, I therefore, I was the professor at the Taj. Okay. So I'm the Taj professor. I have seven instructional videos. Now, I don't know if this is what you guys are interested in your library, but some guys did a video, a documentary of me a while back. Would you want this? Would this fit into your research yes, archives? Yeah. yeah. You want a signature? Yes. yes. Go for it. I don't have a, a marker. Do you have a, a marker? I got an extraordinary pen. Yeah. Here we go. Nick pens coming up. That's good. Um, Say. Well, I had a, a question. So, like, we one of the um, reasons we're we're interested in this is sort of you know why why continue to run. And so, in, when you were chatting with other um, members of minor parties of, of people who would run who may not necessarily have a good chance of, of getting elected, what do they offer reasons? Do they say you know this is why we're doing it? Like, no. For you, it's a, a case of here's my system. It's really really good. If you don't vote for it, it's sort of like, you know... It's You're an idiot. Yeah, okay. Well, again, I don't know how anybody can get involved in politics when they don't have an answer to the people's problems. We, well, yeah, I do. Here's how one lady explained it to me. I ran in municipal elections. Mm -hmm. She said, when I look at how they screw it up, how they make such huge mistakes, I figure anybody's got to be able to do better. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason she ran. Anybody should be able to do better who is just honest and straightforward and caring. What? And so yet they can't because they don't know. What should I put this? To the Legislative Assembly? To Ontario uh, Archives? To what? Um, to, to the Canadian Parliamentary Review? Yeah, Canadian okay. Parliamentary yeah, Review. Canadian Parliamentary Review. Wait, wait till he signs. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I've got more questions. He's going to get signed. <laughs> I'm a good multitasker. Oh, that's good. Uh oh, misspelled it. No, I didn't. See, we knew that. See, I'm not so good at multitasking. I tell people if I'm ever elected prime minister of the planet, this will be worth something someday. So I've got a girlfriend who works for a bank, yeah. and her name is well, it doesn't matter. Anyways, Vernon and Hutchins. So it's two pretty long signatures. And you know what the bank manager said to her? Mm -hmm. You have to change that signature. It takes too long. It's costing us money for you to write all that. So now, this is all she does. Yeah. yeah. Why not? You can make your signature anything you want. This, this is all I do. Yeah. So it started when I was a kid. I said, well, there's a J. Right. And there's a T, and I may as well finish the thing, so next thing you know, I just do that. I can count the number of circles and know if it's me. See, that's, you know... Okay! Not me, I'm still the, the long Me too, me too. All right. You can now, tell we're not signing a lot of checks. That's true. I only published two books so far. Okay. And, I, and now they're off, I've taken them down. Okay. Because they were system books, okay? Mm -hmm. And because the system was published in the first two pages, I invented a system on how to play poker, how to figure out your odds, okay? Put it this way, the best players in the world who play limit hold can make two bets an hour. 
Yes. If you're playing 20 bucks an hour, that's 40 an hour. Mm -hmm. I, through my career, was doing 3.5. 75% better than the best right. because of the things I invented to help me play. Uh -huh. And I put them in my system here, including my other poker. But here's the point. Because they put this at the front, Amazon went and did a preview and gave the damn system away. So who needs an exercise book? 15,000 problems I got in here yeah. and they go and give away the two-page system at the front. So I took it down. I'm but printing a new book. Yeah, and put the system at the back. Well, I did that in this one here. Sorry, I did that in my rules book and they went and published it from yeah. the back. I did, I swear. Oh, they're pretty smart. I put my rules at the back, how to make do 60 hands an hour instead of 40. So yeah. Imagine if you're a casino and you're making hundred, you know, five bucks a pot. You can go to sixty hands instead of forty. Yeah. But John, if they're putting that up free on the website, then they're not going to sell the book. Well, they didn't put it up. Amazon did as a as a preview. Yeah, but Amazon wants to make money. Well, I well. So why are they putting up the secret? I I complained. I com I complained. I mean, they wouldn't do anything, so I canceled both books. But, you know, so here you go. There's. These are uniques, okay? Maybe no more than 10 or 20 of either of them Why printed. Why don't you put them in the rare book collection? Well, stick them in an archive somewhere in my file. <laughs> Thank you. And last but not least, I give you. I only printed up a thousand of these in '97. But their Queen's got one, Supreme Court's got one. So, Ontario Parliamentary Review. Oh, I smell it. Doesn't matter. Well, put the date on. Yeah, I, I forgot the August. So, what, so you're, you're living in, in uh, Brantford now, and you've lived in Ottawa for a long time. Have you ever yeah. had candidates for various offices come to your house knocking on doors? Yeah. And what what do you what do you tell them? You, you, like if you're you possibly you're a candidate yourself, but yeah. Well, you usually usually they might recognize me if if I'm running in the same run as them. Yeah. But other than that. Um, I don't want to. So you don't engage them? Well, I know they ain't got the solution to the money, right. and therefore they're dealing with a symptom. So I don't want to offend them. And, you know, I mean, but excuse you know, me, I'm not going to challenge inferiors. I yeah. can't get it, so. But, I mean, we have the system we have, and these are the people, so you want to elect the best one that you possibly could. Right. Yeah, but these people are out there claiming they can fix something when they got no clue. Mm. What do you want me to... I can't deal with people like that. Do you ever watch the parliamentary channels? Do you ever watch like the Ontario House? Well, no, no I usually only... I don't have TV. Okay. Okay, so I only get online news. Oh, okay. But on your online news... All right, so you're on your computer and you yeah. go to CBC yeah. and watch or the whatever. broadcast. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to watch TV? Too many ads. Yeah. Did you ever watch CNN? I mean, back in the day, you could watch CNN. Now CNN's got three minutes of programming and five minutes of ads. And that's what you're living with. You can't even bear to watch it. So you're wise. Don't watch the TV. But, okay, so the parliamentary channel goes out. I mean, the feds do it, and we do it. I guess all the legislatures do it. So the people can sit and watch question period or watch the speeches when the bill is introduced and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, to, maybe to them it's interesting, but to me, I understand the ploys used. We need this, you have to have this, I want you to have that. Mm -hmm. You know, I get upset that they never say how. I know you want me to have that. I know you want the best for me. Yes, we need this. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. What can you do? You know, so I just get tired and I'm... Don't want to listen. Hmm. If I heard somebody talking about something, now Trump in the States down south, that is a different phenomenon altogether. He is striking at so many realistic things that he just doesn't look, he doesn't look normal. He Do you doesn't. Think he wants to win? Well, yeah, I mean, the Do you point think is. he wants to win? Well, yeah, come on, think about it. Well, he doesn't want to give your babies a whole bunch of inoculations and vaccines all at once. Well, he doesn't believe in global warming. He doesn't want you to waste money on fighting carbon. 
Uh, he wants to investigate 911, and he wants to investigate whether they lied about Iraq. You think the Republicans ain't going to want to shoot him for that? Legalized marijuana everywhere. What's the last one? And climate warming, global warming is a hoax. I mean, every one of these amazing, look at Wynn, Trudeau, they're all out there going, it's getting warmer, and it ain't gotten warmer in 18 years. So with with that and like the, the question, so you, I've never you, seen so much truth from yeah. one person. So with the let system, it's mostly based on financial exchange. With these other questions, there's obviously an economic um, aspect to it. But what what about do, do you when you have a, a platform? Do you have any um, additional things that you're mentioning? Well, that? let's see now. I got a page A B P R O G S A B Progs Abolitionist Programs, where <clears throat> People have laughed at me. You haven't changed your political party's programs in 20 years. And I say, well, when you get it right the first time. <laughs> so, but yeah, there, that's basically it. But yeah, <clears throat> let's see, there's interest-free money. Mm -hmm. There's uh, free insurance. Look, I call large database insurance. Imagine I tell everybody I'm prime minister. Everybody stop paying fire insurance premiums. I want you to register. Everybody register the value of your house. If there's a fire and we've registered five trillion in houses, mm -hmm. and your house is worth 500 Gs, we're going to charge everybody a millionth of a penny apiece until that amount is paid. So we're going to not pay up front in case you burn, mm -hmm. but because we have the technology to collect pennies after, we'll wait to see if we have a fire, and then we'll collect after the fact with no overhead expenses. But then you're putting all these people Oh, yeah, all these insurance bookies out of work. Hey, insurance provides nothing that a normal farm family needed 200 years ago when he had neighbors. The fire burns down the house, everybody comes and helps. Well, you can't do that in Toronto, a half a million coming to help, but you could all chip in a dime. Okay, so now I've got to go... And chipping in now becomes easy. It wasn't then. But I've got to go back to the fact that, like, you tried to, to work with the social credit because you really felt that they had the same uh, ideas as you did about the... Effect. Very simple. And so, but then that fell apart. No, 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 no. What happened was, okay, the money lenders place agents or moles no, but that's in... A, so you don't think this is... I'm going to talk about the social credit okay, moles. You think that the people in social credit were against... John, the engineer, like Mr. like Major Douglas, their founder, right. who wants to run an interest-free credit system, yeah. like um, Louis Evin, the Quebec guy, says, that not even Major Douglas said. Major Douglas thought he could, he could compensate for the interest. Mm. You got the principal, and you got the debt, P plus I. He said, well, instead of charging no interest to keep P over P, why not just add a little bit of dividend to everybody so they can pay their interest? Mm -hmm. Well, that would have worked. Okay, so that's the point. Major Douglas' solution, I call it the numerator solution. We have the principal, the money we, were, we borrowed, and we have the debt, principal plus interest. Mm -hmm. We can only pay the principal 100 out of 110. The other remaining 10 out of 110, we can never pay. So, two solutions. We get rid of the 10 in the denominator, 100 over 100, or we add 10 in the numerator, 110 over 110. Either way will balance the equation. Mm -hmm. Major Douglas's way in the numerator allows it to go unbalanced and it has to be compensated. Mm -hmm. Me, I prevent the unbalancing. Mm -hmm. So my form of social credit is better solution, more efficient mm -hmm. than Major Douglas's form of social credit, but both would have balanced the equation, both would have worked, only a question of efficiency, and the people who love Major Douglas are offended that I would say that mine's better. Mm. I've offended those people. Yeah. And as for the Quebecers, I don't know. There was just one crazy lady at the top in yeah. charge, yeah. Uh, Belt Gauthier, and whatever, whatever, and she's the one who took Louis Evan out of the game. Mm -hmm. He was starting to run in politics, yeah. and then she became his lady and talked him no more politics. Just teach people, just teach people. Forget going for the power yourself, okay? If we just keep teaching, soon enough they will be educated and then they'll do it themselves. And of course they haven't. And him continuing, so I consider her a 
Judas goat mole who destroyed and took Louis Evan out of the social credit movement, out of politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope she's being judged accordingly. Eliminating mm -hmm. waste of time can save human dealer jobs from computer. Oh, that's what you were talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. do it. Cool. Okay, but what about, you haven't written a uh, book about money. Uh, all of that stuff. Well, I know, but I've published a thesis online at, you know, johntramal.com or smartestmatter.ca slash bank math, okay. which has been up there for like 30 some years. You know, anybody can find a mistake, I'll give them a thousand bucks. No one's got my genome yet. But it's simple stuff. I'm just saying, hey, come on, poker chips, you can't gum it up. If you can gum up poker chips, and I'll give you a Gino. Okay, so why aren't people buying in it, into it? What's the real reason? Like the, the like the bottom line. What is the bottom line? Why isn't it happening? Why it makes so much sense? They don't know. No, They're, no. They haven't idiot. been told. No, why don't the politicians? Or the politicians and the bankers and the whole establishment. Well, no, no. The bankers profit. The politicians, they will get killed by their bankers who will cut their funding. So therefore, they can't object. And they're all benefiting, they're all getting a little piece of the action, so you're going to get no resistance there. I don't think the politician, uh, politicians are benefiting. Are they benefiting? Well, yeah, they got jobs. Their they're, 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 they're people in their writings don't have jobs. How much does a, a politician make? Like a, yeah, but when he gets out, he's going to be on a board of directors somewhere, they, get all sorts of perks. It's don't. his chance to go kiss a, the right ass, okay? Well, they don't make a lot of money, they really don't. And when you think sure. the Prime Minister of Canada makes, what, 325000 and the President of the Bank of, uh, I mean, the World Bank makes $7 million or something plus. So why does he want to do it? Exactly. Why? Yeah. Why? People. No. Something else. There's something else in there. Cares about Canada? No, they're getting something else in the background. They're what getting they get? goodwill. Goodwill from billionaires, whom they get a chance to do a favor for. But you know, and if, they'll be rewarded later. You think? How else can you explain something as simple as poker chips, and they just don't get it? Do you, Do you think that they? <clears throat> don't get it or that they don't want to get it? Well, they don't want yes. to get it. There's a famous line by a guy named Mencken that said, you know, you're pretty tough to convince a guy whose salary depends on not understanding what you're saying. Mm. So, Just a second now. I didn't get that. It's tough to convince someone yes. whose salary is dependent on his not getting it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Amen to that. Yeah. So I did get that. The Bible calls it the Bible calls it the big the great prostitution in, in the book of Revelations. The great everybody So has anybody else read the Bible the way you've read it? Besides maybe the social credit guys? I mean seriously. No, it's, it's actually I, I'm working on a book right now about about Jesus' real anti slavery debt message. Oh, yeah. Because no one ever has. No one pointed out that Jesus' most often cited words are the definition of interest and how Paul relayed how it should work. But how did you, you figure know? that out? It's just by I, your own reading? Well, I, ca I came at, tell you this? No, I came at it from the point of view, I've already figured out my casino is the right way to do it. Yes. Now, what can back me up? Well, let's go check the Bible. Oh, wow. Nehemiah said, Hey, you rich guys, stop loan shark and give him back your stuff. Let the exacting of interest stop. Well, guess what? That line's now been deleted from the Bible. The Good News Bible, let the exacting of interest stop, is gone. It's gone. It used to be, you're loan sharking. Let it stop and give him back your stuff. Now it's, you're loan sharking. Give him back your stuff. Cutting out to let the exacting stop. Now, i got a picture of me picketing the, the opening of the legislature in the yellow book there. And my sign is, <laughs> this was in, uh, there it is. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Okay. Come on, this was an early picture. Which legislature? This one here. From the hill or here? No, here, Toronto. Abolishing trust. And, and there's my sign. The Bible says, let the executive interest stop, Nehemiah 5.10, right. and that one's now gone. Hmm. And who's this? Is that John Blackair? Uh, yes, it was the old, uh, the, the former uh, deputy, 1981 or 82, and I think. you're right behind him. What? Cool. You're right behind him. Was this in one of the papers? Yeah, it was in the Toronto Sun, I think it was. 
So, yeah, because the farmers had come in the morning to protest against, and the opening was in the afternoon. Yes. Well, we were in the morning, and we came back in the afternoon, so we were the only guys protesting when the media were there. Yes. there <laughs> so so you, you mentioned that part of the idea is, is based on uh, um, a, an interpretation of the Bible and, and what was there. Do you... Are you a member a member of a community um, like a religious community? No, no. no. I was I was raised a Catholic for the first twelve years and I quit mm. doing stupid stuff, you know. And they all got stupid stuff, you know, stupid beliefs and stupid rules. But they all got at the base, loan shark in bed, mm. you know. Jesus, Muhammad, Nehemiah, Buddha, all the great guys are just saying loan shark in bed, yeah. you know. Whether they say it overtly or they say it another way. That runs through all great religions, is that the rich oppress the poor. So You know, I'm, I'm really surprised by this conversation because um, I didn't know why you kept running. And, I mean, that's why we wanted to talk to you. Why is John Termal or Termal continuing to run in all these damn elections and he gets 11 votes or he gets 83 votes or everything? So isn't he devastated every time an election I know, I can, I can imagine. And all yeah. that kind of stuff. I'm thinking, you know, why would he continue? Well, I say, why did Lord Such continue? But he was making fun of the system and that was his so purpose. That, okay, so I'm a serious candidate. Why would I continue? Well, Do I like losing, people ask? Well, I don't know. So you actually are serious. I am providing an answer that people can pick up and use like they did in Hamilton on their own. Mm -hmm. Or someone might just pick up and put into the brains of another leader who gets elected and say, why not reprogram the Bank of Canada? You know? So I don't know how to have an effect on a brainwashed electorate and I consider it brainwashed and conditioned and not up on information, but malinformed. You, okay, so affecting change, how do you affect change? That's what we were talking well, about. Okay, well, okay, and so we were talking about the, spot. the fact that Trump is not going to be able to affect change because the uh, in crowd is going to circle the wagon. Yeah, but my answer, my answer was if a guy who's an outsider won't be able to affect change, what do you think the odds are of an insider affecting change? Well, you could be an Who do you want to go for? Outsider or insider? I'll go outsider How just on this. That. How about this? Pretend to be an insider and work the system. Well, come on. You can't do that. They're not stupid. They know you're not an insider. Well... God, they, they own everybody. But there has been change. There have been... Not where it's important. There has been no change in money. Yeah, well, maybe you're right. Debts and loan sharking are as privileged and as worshipped as ever. So, there hasn't been. So, you're asking, how can the change be affected? And why am I bothering running when it's not being affected? I'm hoping that someone will do like Hamilton again. Or a leader, one of the guys I'm running with, catches on. Though I think that's a lesser probability. Well, it's never is, happened. What, so what, go ahead. What, if, if the chance of big change happening with the, the bigger system is not great, what about doing what other people have uh, done in the past and sort of joining something like uh, an exchange community and like a... No, no, that's the, that's the barter. Well, there's that's the three barter. strategies. There's political, legal, and economic. Right. Political, get the power. Yeah. Legal, get a judge yeah. with the power. And economic, just do it. Well, yeah, I am promoting barter, time barter at the bottom. I'm pushing, I'm supporting. I'm at, every time I hear about another crash in another city using a let's, I got it up my site. C, 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 that's what I do. C, C, C. Every time an alternate currency pops up to solve the problem, I go C. So that's all I can do. Okay, so why do you really want to get this system out there? What is the, what is the fundamental reason for your doing this? The ke kingdom of heaven is at hand. All we have to do to escape the kingdom of hell is turn off the feedback on debts. And okay, then all of a sudden, everybody can pay their debts. No one's ever going to have a debt headache again. All foreclosure guys are gone. All poverty courts are gone. Most regular uh, violence courts are gone because no one's mugging anybody when they've got an interest-free credit card, right? So No one's going to mug you ever again if they can go borrow wherever they need from daddy, sugar daddy, but right? But now, you, you have expended years of 
energy on this. So why have you done that? What is the real reason? I mean, you want to bring your idea across, but why? Uh, why, why, why? It, it, My duty as an engineer. Your when, duty as an engineer? When, when, I, when I became an engineer, they have the ritual of the engineer in Canada, where they may take us into this dark, hallowed chamber with an anvil and chains leading up to us, and we hold it, and we swear that we will do the very best pursuant to our ethics to always do it best. Now, here I am, I discover I'm the only electrical computer engineer in the world specialized in the mathematics of gambling, and we are afflicted by a computerized death gamble. Gee, I guess I'm the only person with an engineering duty to take on the problem of the malfunctioning computer, just like Mr. Spock on Star Trek. How many times have you seen Mr. Spock access the central computer and save a planet? Hmm. I want to do the same thing. But now, the banks have um, these offices called risk offices or something. So they, what they do, they've been hiring uh, kids or people from Europe usually, or probably from India, who are real good brains at math and at all that kind of stuff. And so they're assessing the risk of everything that the banks are doing. Yeah, but the point is, the banks, by charging interest, create the risk. You're going to knock somebody out. Someone's got to lose. If, put it this way, if I take two chairs out of the musical chairs game, we're going to double the number of losers. Mm. Well, I'm just saying that controlling the number of losers is a function of the chairs, not how stuff is explained to people. So, fixing the money system is a Mr. Spock move. If I could get access to the central bank computers of the world, switch the disks, and people wake up the next morning finding out, don't owe any interest anymore, just put it all against principal. Oh, you're out of debt next month. We subtracted all the interest you paid in the past and threw it in due. So do you why are you doing this? Because you care about duty. the little guy? It's my duty as an engineer. Well, yeah, that too, okay? Or do you just think that it's going to make the whole system work more smoothly? No, no, that too. Look, okay. fixing, so you fixing. you me who, you know, is about to retire and I'm going to be on a fixed income and yeah. whatever. Yeah, doesn't everybody? Well, maybe. If they're given a chance and they're in public life, wouldn't everybody like to help the little old people? Well, okay. Okay, well, me too. All right. Except my way is by saying, you worked all your life. I don't care if you're broke or you got a bankroll. You now can spend all you want on your credit card. Go. So that that's an interesting point, though, because it sounds to me as, as though you're saying that anyone, everyone who's putting their, their name forward for public office is at the heart of it, doing it out of their own idea for good. No, no one is... I don't, I don't, well, unless you got someone like connected, Clinton, okay? That kind of connection where it's in your family that you're going to be the Trudeau, the crown prince leader of Canada. Failed engineering, but he's my leader. You know, doesn't understand thermometers, thinks it's getting warmer. You know? So why are those and people... And he, he why passed first year engineering. Must have been a Quebec university. So why do you Take think... Take that back. Don't mean that. <laughs> Whatever university he went to, it was no good. It's probably Go. Newfie University. No, no, no. I don't... <laughs> there's only one. <laughs> but in Newfies, there's some, the, there's some of the okay. smartest people in this country, those wow. Newfies. And I think there's more Newfoundlanders per population that are university presidents than in any yeah. other oh. jurisdiction. <laughs> That's not hard, <laughs> is it? Anyway, never mind. So, st I'm still wanting to get down to why you really want to affect this change. I mean, you've got this idea, and it's just not really going out there. But why do you even watch what? Okay, you know, I'm. I'm I'll put it this way: I am, I am the smartest man on the planet. Right. I'm a winner. I can go into any game and learn it better than you. I can play your cards better than you. Yeah, but you're not winning at po at the elections. At, yeah, but the point is that they're fixed. Okay. What do I care? You think if you think if I, we sat down with a room of people and I explained how interest-free is better, and he explained how paying interest to a few rich guys is better, and they all voted for him, then I might feel a little upset. I'd say, wow, I must have really screwed up that presentation. But when you're not even on the show, and they don't even know so, you're there. So is 
is this, I guess, are voters not voting out of a rational choice? The, the, no, they're, 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 not, they're, they're, not no, they're voting for their favorite color. They've been, it's my team. It's a team game. And they always talk about it like a horse race. They never talk about issues. They talk about chance of winning. And then they got to get out the gambler vote. The gambler vote. That's why they make it sound like, some people think that the name of the game is to pick the winner. So they look and they see who's got the most signs, who's got the most signs. I think he's going to win. Okay, I'm voting for him. Oh, hey, I'm a winner. I won. I picked the winner. That's why they keep referring it to as a horse race mm. to make the guys think that picking the winner was the win. So, so let me ask you about this then. Right now, in most of Canada, we have this system where it's first past the post. You pick the, the yeah. winner. Some um, parties are, are, and some people are, are saying, <coughs> you know what, this system is... Not representative. Not representative yep. in the way that they feel it, it should be. It isn't. Let's switch to something else, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. If, if that's the case, and it's not necessarily picking the winner, that yeah. there's more of a, a representative vote, what, what would happen then? Do you think that people would vote for rational choice, or do you think that people still would vote for their favorite color or their favorite... Well, it might be different then, okay? But right now, they're not offered that choice, so they have no other choice but to pick their favorite color. I mean, when was the last time you actually heard anybody get into the midst and gritty of something being done? Well, they, I mean, they always, they put out platforms and they... That say what they want. Sorry, what does that they mean? Put, oh, we want all cripples to have escalators. That's what you're saying. Yeah, we want, you need it. You need more escalators, cripples. We, you need this. Okay. We want this for you. Okay. I'm going to work hard to get you those escalators. Okay, so what, you got what, any money? No. But I'll work hard. Okay, so they're saying they're going to, you need... That's not lying. But... But it's misleading. It's misleading. Okay, so what should they be saying? They should be saying, I'm going to deliver it or I'm not going to deliver okay. it. And if you're going to deliver it, how are you going to deliver it? Well, I'm going to go get some credits printed up by the bank. I'm going to pay these guys to bring me cement and these guys to bring me wood. And I'll pay these guys. And when it's all built and it costs 10000 in new chips, then we're going to tax it back a hundred per for 100 years. So... King Henry used tallies that way. The greatest king in all history, Henry the First. He's the guy who invented tallies. Henry the First? Tallies were just an IOU system where if you owed me something, we took a stick, we printed John owes Jerry 10 pounds of gold, split it in two, mm -hmm. you got one half, I got the other. Right. We can, the king said, I'm going to print my own chips to run my kingdom, yeah. like the bronze. Yeah. I'm going to print up tallies. Here you have 10 tallies worth 10 pounds of gold. Go build me a bridge, Mr. Duke, in your community. Yeah. He now goes and he takes his gold and he's got the tally there and he pays for the bridge. He's going to tax and toll and get it back eventually to pay his taxes, but he only has to be taxed as fast as the bridge depreciates. That's how King Henry ran tallies for 700 years before the Bank of England got in and got them discontinued. Now, now we're going to go into the Trudeau era. Now, <laughs> no, 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 just one. One. before we do, just a question about the, the different eras, right? So, yeah, you, you've been doing this for about 35, 37 years. Um, at some point through, you know, either just physically wanting to, to retire and, and not do it again or to, to, to pass things on, what happens when John Trammell is not running for an election? What happens when somewhere down the line, hopefully in a long, long time, when... When I don't run. Well, that means run. I won't be doing my duty, will I? So who, who is... If I'm the only engi computer engineer in the, in the world specialized in gambling and we're being killed, people are dying, by a computerized death gamble software, and I got the new software that can save them. So would you not see that as a duty that I must do, and I can't stop? So, so is there an with life at stake? I can't stop. Is there is there an associated duty then to sort of say, you know what, I, and unless you live forever, there's going to become a point where you're not going to be able to to tell people about this. Who who takes over for you? I don't know. Isn't it neat that in 37 years, I'm the only person on the planet talking about inflation could be down behind your back? Mm. What do you want me to say? Every money reformer in the world has that wrong. And when he says, we need more paychecks to pay people, they just got to go, oh, it'll cause inflation. And everybody goes, yes, that's right. And guy's an idiot. 
So nobody can withstand the inflation argument except if you know about it shift B. I can. So but here's now here's a final point why people should get mad. This is the national debt of Canada. And previous to the 1970s, we always owed about 18 to 20 billion. Okay? And then suddenly it started to grow and grow and grow exponentially. It went to 10 times the debt in 10 years. Then it went 30 times the debt in 20 years, or three times. So it went from 10, 18, so it went from 20 to 200 in 10 years, factor of 10. Then it went from 200 to 600 in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, what happened here? What happened? Trudeau came in. Okay, what happened? <laughs> he, he came in here, by the way, 68, okay. but what happened there in 74? Well, the oil prices, right? Yeah. No. Here's how it used to work before 74. Same thing with Ontario. Was it the gold standard? No. Oh. Same thing with Ontario. Yeah, yeah. Here was our debt. Almost nothing, nothing, okay. nothing. And in 1974, oh, starts to grow. There's the exponential curve. Okay, so what's, what happened? Before 1974, to build the um, St. Lawrence Seaway, for yeah. instance, the government of Ontario could go to the Bank of Canada and borrow money interest-free for infrastructure. Oh. In 1974, Pierre said, I'm shutting down the interest-free window. You must now go borrow your money from the private banks at interest. So, the government of Canada started borrowing money at interest in 1974 had deficits, $25 billion a year for the next 40 years. That's a trillion dollars in debt service over the last 40 years. And who's getting all that money? The banks. That's right. The guys who talked Pierre into shutting down the interest-free window. Now guess what? Guess what happened in Ontario? Well, in 1974, Pierre Trudeau shut down the interest-free window at the Bank of Canada. And the debt started going up in exactly the same way. And guess what happened in Quebec with the other third of the country and in the other eight provinces? So, this happened everywhere when Pierre shut down access to interest-free money. It forced everybody to start deficit financing, got everybody deep into debt, competing with each other at higher and higher and 22% interest rates before Pierre left, and $2 trillion in debt service. Now, divide that by the number of Canadians today, mm -hmm. that's about 70 G's a piece. Right. So, if Pierre Trudeau hadn't shut down the interest-free window and said, I want you to go start borrowing from my friends, the loan sharks, mm -hmm. we would all have 70 grand in every single one of our bank accounts today. There so, Pierre Trudeau, by shutting that window, has cost every single Canadian today 70 grand in our accounts. That would be there if he hadn't done that. But that 70 grand, oh, that was all taken and given to the few rich bankers overseas. So. Do you find that your message, so like right now we're in a low interest rate environment. Do you find that when there are financial crises like 2008, that People that wasn't even a high interest crisis. That wasn't. No. That wasn't. That, high was, high that was just a crash. Yeah. Money. Yeah. yeah. No. But do you, do you find that when we're at, for example, early eighties, really really high interest rates, yeah. that your message is being received better well, by that, people? That's that's when I was. Uh, let's see. Uh, that was around twenty percent. Yeah. yeah twenty two it hit. There I was picketing the Bank of Canada every Thursday for five years. Yeah. Saying jail buoy. Well, you're gonna wait for twenty two percent. So, yeah, that was, I wasn't aware how we had, you had had access to interest-free funds before 74. I didn't even know that, that Trudeau had done it to us. So when did you find that out? Like, was that in some article you read? Two years ago? Yeah, oh. so. Just since the Bank of Canada Comer case in Toronto started okay. a couple of years ago, like, don't forget, they got a problem. Me, I did my motion against the Bank of Canada what saying. What was the name of that case again? Comer? Uh, Committee on Monetary and Economic Reform, Comer versus the Bank of Canada. On Monetary and, and Economic, economic reform. reform. And uh, so they are arguing that the Bank of Canada not using no interest money hurt us. Look at all the knots. Two double negatives. I, in my earlier case, argued using interest-free money hurts. But they argued not using no interest money hurts. 
Why the double negative? Mm -hmm. Now, they won the first case. The judges said, you can't prove a negative. They appealed. They got the right to try. They call that a win. The point is, the owner of Comer, the major financier, collects interest. He's a rich guy. So he can't say that getting interest is wrong. He can't urge the abolition of interest because it's okay for him. But he thinks that it's wrong that they're not lending to the governments interest-free. So he finances the no interest loans from the not the government is bad and he can't do the positive interest is bad like I did. So that's the difference between the two cases that were ongoing, mine from 30 years ago, interest is bad, evil, abolish it, and theirs, which is abolish it to governments. Now, uh, Plan B in, in Greece and Jeremy Corbyn in, uh, in the UK is talking about qu uh, quantitative easing for the people. Now, quantitative easing was basically interest-free loans for the banks. They could have lent it to the people who could have deposited it in the banks, and the banks would have had it to play with anyway. Instead, they lent it all to the banks to loan shark out to the people, maybe or not. So, quantitative easing is interest-free loans. Jeremy Corbyn talked about quantitative easing for the people. He's talking about interest-free loans for the Bank of England, like Bank of Canada had. He's saying the Bank of England should fund infrastructure interest-free. He calls that quantitative easing for the people. Well, actually, it's for the people's governments. I want quantitative easing for people, too. I want ordinary individuals to be able to log on, Bank of Canada, like PayPal, promise your labor, cut checks to pay all your debts, and after that, all payments go against principal. Mm -hmm. So, there's quantitative easing they did, went all to the banks. Jeremy Corbyn wants quantitative easing for governments too. And I want quantitative easing for people too. Where, where would you put yourself on the political spectrum? If you could sort of... Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Communism isn't all bad. Capitalism isn't all good. There could be a perfect blend of capitalism that's communistic or communism that's capitalistic and I say that Jesus's interest-free let system is the perfect blend between capitalism and communism. You have the right to go out there and hustle and make as much as you can and after you've spent as much as you can spend whatever you can't spend we're taking in front to the next guy so he can plant them next year if you ain't. That's all. He, he owes you. We know. We'll keep track. Hmm. That's okay, a deal. Yeah. And we have to sort of wind up now, I think, because we've been going for quite a while. Okay, what and it's been it? fascinating. It's uh, 20 to 2. Oh, you yeah. have your appointment at 2. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine. So, um, can we take it back to democracy uh, in Canada? I mean, actually, um, where's democracy working? Uh, How can you talk about democracy with a hypnotized electorate? I've often thought, what, what, what? rights do I have to shake up my world when the rules I'm forced to live under are controlled by an electorate who are hypnotized by my opponents? Am I forced to abide by those laws enacted by the hypnotized? Or do I have the right to go beyond those points? You have to give uh, the the electorate a little bit more credit because maybe some of them are hypnotized but there are others who are thinkers and who are readers and who try to figure it out. Jesus didn't it. think so. Jesus said they will forever be hearing without hearing and seeing without seeing or understanding. Well then you don't even want democracy, then you want uh, autocracy. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, no, no, yes. No, 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 no. I, I keep telling this. I could get into power and I could reprogram the computer. You'd wake up with an interest-free bank account go, well that's kind of neat. And the real ramifications wouldn't hit in until your first payment day. Now, I could get a judge to do that. Same thing. Or you could set up a barter system and slowly but surely get there anyway. So, I see it happening everywhere around me. Mm -hmm. I see the emergence of interest-free softwares, usually when the system crashes first. If people are doing okay on cash, don't even try to talk to them about switching. 
They got a crash first, sad to say. You can't expect them to fix it before they're hurting. It's a weakness of humanity. You know, they're not, I can look ahead and understand the ramifications of future thinking because I'm a gambler. I'm supposed to be able to analyze future accurately and say, I don't want to go there. Like in the, the, the movies for the kids, they said, well, what about if people were going to disagree with you? Would you feel bad about that? And I said, hey, you got two ways out of ten of winning if you do that. You got one way out of ten of winning if you do that. Who wants to stand up and don't like I going to? See my point? It's a new world when you got game theory, which allows you to use math to come up with the best way to do stuff. Mm. All I'm doing is presenting people with the best way to do stuff, and if they reject it, it has no bearing on me. Mm. So, Someday historians will look back and say, Jesus, look at John Turmel said, let's get rid of marijuana prohibition and all these cancers will stop. And they went, no, no, and they had cancers for 10 more years. Or John says, fix money, and then foreclosures will stop. And no, they had homeless people for 35 more years. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that everything I've pushed and I've taken to court mm -hmm. is logical, mm -hmm. honorable, sound, and the fact it lost is an indictment of the justice system and never of me if I was right. So would you say that... You're more, you know, like a Cassandra, someone who's the, the um, mythic person who's doomed to see the, the future, but not let anyone else believe that they can see the future, that you can sort of say, I can see a future where this is possible, but no one's listening to me. No one's listening that, you know, this is, this is actually... Well, here's the point. Everybody with the same math as me can see the same thing. Like, I mean, I... There are almost no people I can sit down for a couple of hours like you and not say, well, it makes so much sense, how come they don't get it? You know what I mean? Small groups, it makes sense and they get it. But once you go outside into the general world where nobody else is getting it, they don't want to hear but about it. But then it comes down to effecting change. Why can't this change be effective? Oh, well, okay. Why is preventing it? I mean, is it because of the elite or is it yes. whatever the vested interests that are out there that already have it? Yes. Like, what, is that what's stopping it? Yes, I don't think it's the poor people who have no but play all, in their fate. All you need to do is convince the vested interests. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's why I call it a Spock move. I don't need to convince the slaves that lifting their chains is good for their masters too. I just need to convince the masters. Or access the computer and just turn off the chains. Oh, well, that's pretty good. I like so that. that's why, that's why, you know, I go to all these demonstrations and I'm in a suit and the other kids, you know, all these anti-poverty, they're not, you know, protesting against debt. And I'm saying, why am I in a suit? I say, you guys wanna, you know, you wanna, you got these poor countries that are, mountains of debt on you want to deliver them from your mountains of debt while the conveyor belts pile on 50% more every year. I said, I ain't getting down there doing no shoveling. The engineer's going after the conveyor belt switch, which is why I'm in a suit. You're not going to find me with a shovel. No. So, I'm saying that because this is a spot move that can be done without the approbation of the slaves or even the approbation of the masters. It just need be done. And I do it by people picking up my LED software and starting up. Okay? I mean, I'm, this was freeware in 84. I made it available free to the world. Just pick it up and try it. And it, when people do pick it up and they do try it, well, they are learning through experience what I was hoping my message would be. They're not going to find out till later that I'm the guy who financed it. I'm the guy who even got it to the UN. All that stuff is on blacklisted media wise. I mean, you try and walk up to any major editor anywhere and say, I got a story on Termel, he'll go plump. He just wants publicity. I remember in Ottawa once, I set up a network where I linked up all my rich gamblers mm -hmm. and I invited all poor people to come into, into my place and I would give them a photo ID. I bought a photo ID, Social Credit Party of Ontario, it was actually. And I'd give them a photo ID and match them up with one of my foster merchants and when you get your welfare check, don't go to Money Mart and lose 42 bucks on your $700 check. Go to my merchant, he'll give you the full amount, maybe buy a tank of gas off of him with the 42 bucks. Mm -hmm. 500 foster merchants and people I set up, and I was accused of doing it just for the publicity. Mm -hmm. 
But anyway, the, you see what I mean? These are little things. Why wouldn't a gas guy who is taking in eight, ten thousand a day want to cash people's checks because he ain't getting any interest at the bank anyway, and it's safer for him to take checks than the money. You know what I mean? It's so obviously simple that no one would ever dream of it unless they were looking for the sake of the week. And yeah, I am such a great, powerful winner yes. that I want to make it a fair game for the guys I beat. There you go. And right now, there's already one thing that's stopping me from feeling a winner. And it's the fact that they didn't have a fair shot at playing. Mm -hmm. And of course, I ain't a winner either in their eyes, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> but someday, when they look back, they're going to say, son of a bitch, the Taj Professor was the biggest political loser on the planet. <laughs> so either the gamblers were stupid or the voters were stupid. There and I go. bet it wasn't the gamblers. There you go. So oh, it's just like, I mean, so many things are like short-circuited zap if you know the right thing. For instance, marijuana. And driving. Did you know that insurance companies in the United States have reported less payouts for high drivers? Interesting. No, what I does that tell you? What does that tell you? They pay more attention. They're sharper. Therefore, that's why they're gonna. That's why I'm proposing they start a designated high driver programs Listen. to keep the drunks and the straights off the roads. The kids. The kids in university. Uh, take drugs or, or smoke pot when they're studying because they can get more into their heads. Well, I mean, I play my accordion better, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> I always think of it as an inspirational thing rather than not. Oh, I never told you my get rich queen. Last few minutes. Now, everywhere I go, I say, look, I got a large network of online friends. Yes. And if I were to send them into your store, would you give them a small discount? Okay. So. Over the years, I've had over a thousand stores. Yes. Say, so, yeah. So here's my, just my recent Brantford directory with 120 stores. I print these up, give them to my friends. Each of these no-name generic coupons yes. works in any store in the whole list. Right. You can go to Harvey's, restaurants, you know, auto shops, Baskin Robbins. How what much, a, What kind of a discount? Well, it depends on the store. Baskin okay. Robbins, ten percent, okay. but fifty bucks off an off an, off an, uh, air conditioner installation. Okay. You see, so every coupon works anywhere, which is why I call it magic money. Right. And the point is, I can now sell them for a buck a piece because every deal is worth more than a buck. Now, if you want to start a barter network, the toughest thing to do is come up with small chips for your local flea markets. Because when you start a let's, you're going to end up throwing a flea market. Mm -hmm. Tell your friends, go print up your 500 bucks in your own loonies, your own one hour bills, but that's 12 per hour Canadian. What are we going to use for ones? Well, there's some quarter hour bills, but these can be used for ones. Right. Any little group, baseball team, whatever, could simply say, let's go sign up a hundred stores, say, look it, if our baseball net teams net league come into your store, would you give us a small deal? And most well, half will, okay? They will, they will. Half are stupid, but the other half will. Mm -hmm. And the point is when once you've created a master list served by one single no-name coupon, you've generated money. Mm -hmm. And when every store in town is on the list, then it's a perfect piece of money. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I've come up with a way of creating one dollar bills in the community based on values out of stores to use as the one dollar bills in our time bank barter networks. Cool. Throw that in there. So, but that can't last because when the system is fixed and now the barter money is here, nobody's going to need to give a discount to make a sale ever again. So it's only yeah. while the band system is still going. It's only while the present system is still going and businesses have to discount to make sales that we can get rich doing this. Okie dokie. So. Well, this has been really fun. Did you, did you want to take a couple of pictures while we have John Do you think we should? Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going to put on my, I'm going to put on my, sure. my uniform. Good idea. Bon e day. Uniform. I'll go to my camera. I always wear them. Got to wear the monkey. It makes the old people feel comfortable. Sad to say, you know, uh, it's it's a uniform. 
Oh. Judges, lawyers, everybody, you walk in with a suit, they treat you differently. Where did you get that tie? Oh, I've had it for 20 years. I wish I could find another. Oh, it's, I know. It's, I have a blue one and a black one, but these are my, these are my, this, this, and my let's sticker are my uh, <laughs> particular well, person. I can use that for my bridge games, only I have yeah. wear ties. <laughs> huh? Oh, this is a poker hand, though. They're going to oh, royal flush. Just, like a, a shawl that has a similar pattern. Yeah, I could do that. Wait, how are we going to do this? I think maybe on this side is better. Sure. It's like, the light is better the over there. Yeah. there. Uh. So you, you can't register for the election yet because they're not opening the... Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's three weeks before, so that'll yeah, be next like week. Yeah, it's the 11th or something, I think yeah, it is. So when it's, and they close on the 19th. I'm not sure, but something Well, I'm like going that. to the World Social Forum in Montreal next week. You never know. I'm going there and I'm going to be talking about the uh, central bank accounts in your country. So, who knows if they catch on and they decide to to do that. All right, I'm going to get my let sticker on and I will then... I'll just hold it up when yeah. I paste it. Maybe just uh, over here is probably the best thing. Oh, okay. Unless you want to sit it. No, I think it's better standing up. Okay. And we'll do the best we can. We'll do both with the hat and without. Okay, that's nice. All right. No, but no, you gotta hey. come here because oh. I don't want the doors. All right, around. okay. Hang on, let me put this. Giving you a hard time. This is good here. Let me put my sticker on. I got a lot of these. I can. I just got a picture of you know who and Will. <laughs> the editor. The editor. All right. Wait, this is my usual. This is my usual. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You know. Uh, now I recognize you. Yeah. See, I didn't recognize you before. Let <laughs> me tie this up. Ah, oh, come on. Well, it? that one I'm not worried about too no, much. No, we're not worried about. It's this one I'm worried about. Yeah. Okay, now I've got my complete uniform. Okay, so now you have to say let's. Let's. <laughs> one more, let's. let's. Okay, let's have a look. See if you're all right with that. Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty nice. One. Yeah. Let's see. They're both good. Oh, very good. Perfect. Wonderful. Terminal, the engineer. Cool. Well, I'm going to go There are your you. exhibits. I am so you happy I met you because it's been many years I've been watching you, and I always send an, uh, an email out to everybody and say, you're so relieved John Turnbull is running again. <laughs> it's I true. I, I, I think that, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm run the, the, the system, yeah. um, whenever there's a, a by-election or an election, uh, the announcement goes up by the, the yeah. research services. And, That's yeah. me. Yeah. And then, but when it's, a, when it's a, a general election, it's hard to find out where you're running. Except oh, yeah. I know it's Brantford. Usually it's Brant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So you have to 